um, the second problem, we're going to find area enclosed by the curve y equals x squared minus 1 and y equals 1 minus x. If the graph is not provided, yes, use the graphing tool. Um, this problem is not exactly the same situation as the previous problem because as you see the previous one, they don't cross each other. They're just bounded by the left end and the right end. Okay, but for number two, those two graphs are crossing each other. Another way that we verify where the graphs gonna cross each other or intersect each other, or we have to identify the left end and the right end of the bow or find the interval AB. As you notice, number two, no closed interval provided. Okay, so no closed interval provided. So for, for this case, we have to find the intersection points. How do we find the intersection points? We're going to equate those two equations together by letting y1 equal y2. So we name this as y1, the second as the y2. So we're going to find the intersection point first. And this is going to be the case that we're going to have to do when we do the applications or when we have to find the e equilibrium point when the demand and supply curves are crossing each other. So for y1, we have x squared minus 1. The y2 is 1 minus x. Bring them all into one side of the equation. So we have x squared plus x minus 1 minus 1 equals 0. Simplify to be x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. And then as we see, we have the second power of the equation or the quadratic equation. If we have the quadratic equation, there are multiple ways to, um, to solve for x. Okay, the classic one is the factoring. Otherwise, you can always use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to go ahead and factor them. So x squared is going to be from x times x. Negative 2 is going to be 2 and 1 multiply. But the middle term has a positive sign. So that means the larger quantity has the same sign as, uh, as a sum as plus 1. So it's going to be plus 2 minus 1 multiplied to get negative 2. And then solve for x, we should get x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. So these two numbers appear to be the left bow and the right bow. Okay. Again, if the, the problem doesn't give you the graph, Next, you have to determine, so this is number one, and after we get the intersection point, number two, what you have to do, you're gonna determine which graph is on the top, which graph on the bottom. So we're gonna determine the upper lower function on the closed interval negative two, positive one because we know the left bow, the right bow. How do you determine? You just check the function value as we name y1 equals x squared minus one, and then y2 is one minus x, right? We're gonna check like testing any point between here. Let's get the easy one. So for example, um, pick the point x equals zero in between. At x equals zero, which function value is greater? If x equals at x equals zero, y one gonna be zero square minus one or negative one, where the y two gonna be one minus zero or positive one. So this one kind of indicate that y two is the upper function and y one is the lower function on the graph. So let's see, is the same as the graph? Yes, it is because y two is the one minus x. So this one is called the upper, which is above the entire area. And then the y2, which is x squared minus one, we use it as the, we name it as the lower function. Now, after we determine the upper and lower function, we're gonna set up the integration. So step number three, we're gonna set up um, to find the area as the definite integral from point A to point B, from negative one to positive one, 
upper first subtracted by lower with respect to x from our uh, testing part here integral from negative 2 to positive 1 the upper function is the y2 which is the quantity 1 minus x subtracted by the lower function which is x squared minus 1 with respect to x after we get the setup done so i call this as a setup and then the next we're going to simplify simplify the integrand that means take away the grouping symbol let's see what do you have so one minus x minus x squared plus one this is another sensitive part because you have to distribute the negative side to both terms inside of the parentheses and then clean up as much as we can from what we see one plus one can be combined to be two otherwise you have to do two rounds of the antiderivative of the constant term all right so now the integration becomes from negative two to positive one of one plus one becomes two, right? And the other, they are not light terms. We just copy them down. Now from four terms, simplify to be three terms. That means we're going to have to find three antiderivatives. And that this fall into the similar case that we saw in the previous one as uh, this term is the constant. Does it show? So this, let me use different ink. So this one is the constant term. This one is the power form where r equals one. This as a power where r equals two. Okay. For the constant, the integral of the constant is c times x. The integral of the power is x to the r plus one divided by r plus one. So from two antiderivative rules that we used before. Oh, where did it go? Don't go away. So here. We're going to apply the antiderivative for each term. For the two, we're going to get two x. And for the negative x becomes negative x. Negative x to the power one plus one, it becomes two divided by the new power two, subtracted by x to the power two plus one, or the new power three divided by three. Evaluate from the lower limit negative two to the upper limit positive one. And then simplify again into the form that easier for us to go to the next step. So I'm going to write as a coefficient one half times x to the second minus one third times x to the third and evaluate from negative two to positive one. Same routine. We're going to evaluate by using the upper limit first going to be 2 times 1, uh, 2 times 1 minus 1 half, 1 squared minus 1 third times 1 to the third, and then subtracted by the second group from using the lower limit or negative 2. This is 2. This is 1 third and then negative 2 to the third power. I just got to squeeze it in. And then clean up the number. The first group we have 2 minus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3. The second group we get negative 4. And then negative 2 squared, that's 4. 4 times negative 1 half is going to be, I'm going to write as negative 4 over 2. And I'll explain the reason why. The next one, that's negative 1 third times negative eight that becomes positive eight over three okay just shaking so this is negative one third times four and this one is negative one third times negative eight okay we got all the sign correct and the reason that I keep it as a fraction with without simplifying for over two because I see the the same fraction, the same fraction. So I'm gonna simplify piece by piece the number and the number, like the whole number and the whole number, like two minus negative four that becomes six. So I'm gonna circle this one and this one becomes positive six, and then negative one over two plus four over two becomes positive three over two. 
Okay. And then the next one will be negative one third minus eight over three becomes negative nine over three. Okay. So from negative nine over three, we know that is three. So that means six plus 1.5 minus three, that becomes 4.5 as the area between these two curves or the area in the shaded yellow there. 